we're going to use GitHub's projects here. Now, GitHub kind of revamped how they handle their, their projects. And, and actually, before I get too much further than that, projects is kind of an overloaded term here because a lot of times we think, oh, I have a GitHub project. We think of just the repo itself and, and whatever that kind of project is that we're building. But GitHub, when we click on the projects tab, this really means kind of an abstract concept of a project. So it's not necessarily like a one-to-one -one with a repo. You could have one project that is maybe your payments project. And that might actually correspond to several different repos, maybe your mobile repo and some backend service repos and, and maybe even like a QA repo and a design repo, depending on how you're tracking these things. So project in terms of like GitHub projects is really more of an abstract concept around managing all of the work needed to complete some deliverable here. So in our case here, if we go to projects, we see that we have nothing set up so far. If we click on templates, you can see here that there are ways to sort of create and provide templates for your kind of organization. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to focus on just a single project. Additionally, you'll see here that this looks familiar to issues in the sense that you have open and closed. We have similar filtering here you can do. And the, the thing that we're really looking for at the moment is this big green button. We see link a project. And if I click on that, you'll see that it kind of pulls up this selector that basically will allow me to uh, link this repo to some other existing project, or I can create a new project. Um, similarly, if I just click the drop, drop down here, I can go directly to create a new project. Um, so we want to select this new project option here, which is just going to change that green button. And so now I'll select this. Now what this is going to do is actually going to take us up a level kind of in the organization here. And it's going to allow me to create this project actually at that, that org level. And the first screen I get here is this sort of project creation wizard. So you can see there's, you know, different types here. They've got a template here for like team planning feature release. Um, and if we start scrolling through this, if I click like the feature tab, we can see they have other options here, Kanban, bug tracker, iterative development, product launch, you know, roadmaps, team retros, a lot of different styles of the same type of, you know, columns or tables that we use to kind of manage and review these things. Additionally, you can, you can, again, see the, the predefined templates coming from your organization if you have them, but you don't have any of those at the moment. More interestingly, if you want to just get a better sense of how these things are working and kind of learn with them a little bit more at the, the lower level, you can just create either table which like I said here, you can kind of see this preview table here is really just, it almost looks like a, a spreadsheet effectively of like issues, fields and things. Or you can select a roadmap, a view that allows us to sort of define the, the kind of the bars of when we're gonna be working on these things and dependencies potentially between them. And the last one, the most basic one, the one we're probably most common with is just kind of this left to right horizontal board uh, that you can use for like basic Kanban or, or maybe Scrum, different styles of basically having a column associated with the status and then the list of issues kind of with that status. So we're going to start with this. Um, we're going to start with just a basic board here, and we're going to give this name stream tracker, we'll call this Goobar stream tracker. And this will allow us to, to track different, uh, you know, issues and stuff for what we want to do in these upcoming streams. So once I go ahead and click create project here, we'll see that it's going to give me this, this new project view. And it starts off with uh, these status columns and, and nothing really else. So before we kind of dig into this and how to make this actually useful, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to go back to the projects view again at the org level here. So I mentioned that even though we got to this projects tab from the repo, the project itself was created at the org level. So now when we're at this org level and we click on project, we now see that we have one open here. Um, additionally, we see that we've got four closed as I was just kind of messing around with this a little bit earlier today to get a, a feel for how some of the changes might impact what I wanted to do. But now we've got this one open uh, project here. So now if we open into this, 
we we've got kind of the t the the stubbed out template of something that looks like it might be useful here, but you notice that we don't have anything added to this by default. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's add some items. So if we come in here and just click the bottom row here, add item, and then I click this plus mark, we'll see that we have a few options. I really, I guess mainly just two options. We can create a brand new issue, or we can add an existing item from a repository. So in our case, that's what we're gonna do here. We select new item from a repository, and we get this uh, panel that slides over. And by default, it's showing me this uh, last used project that we were working with. However, I can actually pick from other projects in my org. And so this is why it's important to kind of keep in mind that distinction of projects being at the org level because they allow you to link to issues from different repos, which is really useful. So again, if you have four different repos, maybe an iOS repo, an Android repo, and a backend repo, and a QA repo, you could have one project and pull in tickets from all of those to help manage your projects. In our sense though, I'm just going to select the, the repo we set up for the stream. I'm gonna grab the 10 most recent items, which happens to be all of the items we created, and go ahead and add those selected items. Perfect. So now, once that is done, now we see that in the to-do column here, we've got our scrolling list of all these items that we've uh, um, added, excuse me, all the, all the issues that we've, we've added. And so now by, by doing that, they kind of have this implicit status to them of to-do. And you can see here the, the other statuses we have. We've got to-do, in-progress, and done, which is you know kind of a, a basic three status setup that you might find in a kind of a simple Kanban um, style uh, project. Now, you can customize these things. So again, from my project view here, if I come up to this upper right corner and I select kind of the, the overflow options there and go to settings, you can come down here to the custom fields here and uh, select status. Additionally, you can actually create other fields. We'll look at that in just a second. Um, but for status, you can see here that we can um, edit these uh, statuses. So we can change like to do, we can change the color, the description, et cetera, or we can add a completely new one. So what I want to do here, create a, a new status, which is just kind of like the short list of the next thing I want to work on. Um, so maybe I'll just call this like up next. And I want to kind of change the look and feel of that a little bit. So maybe I will make that, uh, let's say blue and we'll just call this the short list of upcoming, um, tasks for the stream. And now I can reorder this so that kind of the expected general flow for how a task's life cycle might go would be kind of to do, up next, in progress, and then finally done. Now we'll go back real quick and now we see that we have that new status here in up next. Let's populate um, our, our board here or update our board more on. We've already populated. Let's update the board. So for this stream, we're already working on setting up the GitHub project for the stream. Um, so we can move it from to do kind of, it was implicitly up next before I even started the stream. And now it's in progress for the next stream. I know that I want to set up the KTOR project. Maybe the last one would be enforce conventional commits when, uh, when they're used on the repo. This is kind of give us an outline for the next one or two streams here, and we can make use of the different statuses. So this is kind of a nice view of just kind of the high level, like what is the status of our work before we move on. Also, I recommend um, updating the name of this particular view. So in this one, I'm just going to rename this to Kanban board. 
um, so that I have some better sense of what this is rather than just like view one or board one, whatever it was. We can come in here into, into the workflows and we can um, create effectively automations around these issues. Um, so for example, we could go auto add to project. So if we wanted to edit this, we could say anytime a new issue is added to the Goobar URL shortener project with, um, it, it's, it's preset to create the label of, or to, it's preset to only add issues with the label of bug. I want to add any issue. It's also set up to say if, uh, um, if it's an issue or a PR is open, I don't want to add PRs. So I'm going to do just issues. So basically any query matching is issue, you can automatically add to the project. Let's go ahead and save this. And then let's go and create a new issue. Now notice here, we could go ahead and automatically add this to our project that we just set up, but we want to test the automation. So let's not do that. Let's submit this new issue. It worked. So you can see we didn't select the project, but once we created the issue, our automation kicked in and it automatically added to our project. Now notice here that it added it to the project, but it has no status initially. So from the issue here, I can select a status, or if we go to the board itself, we can see that any issues that are added to the project board, but don't have a status show up in this extra column. So now I can, you know, come in here and just move it into the to-do status and Notice now here back in the other window, we automatically see that it's been marked as to do.